Motorland Madness has been the order of the day so far with the European Moto2 Championship and the Junior World Championship, both providing last lap, last corner thrillers here in Aragon. Now it's time for the European Talent Cup to follow suit and provide a little bit more excitement for us. And we've already got some as well. It's a good afternoon, everyone tuning in. It's Jack Appiad and Lewis Sudeby with you once again. We've already had a faller. It's Jacob Rulston, the Australian, that's gone down on the sighting lap. We saw Yara Montero and Alejandro Medina crash out on the warm-up lap. Well, Rulston's gone one better and he's gone down on the sighting lap. Just proving, Lewis, that conditions are getting a little bit more sketchy out there. Yeah. He's down at turn seven, which is uh, quite a way away as well from the, uh, the pits as well. Um, so he's got, he couldn't be much further away from uh, the start finish line than that. So he's got a long way to go. You can see now on the uh, camera lens there, a lot of rain falling. Uh, and this is the last thing that these riders need just before the races. We're waiting to hear whether it's a dry race or not. Could present an opportunity for Zonta van den Goberg to make even further inroads into the championship lead of David Alonso. Alonso, of course, with the most to lose in these kinds of conditions. He's also, in some ways, got a lot to gain. As uh, we can see just uh, at the top of the screen, a rider also running off the uh, grid, whether he's uh, just going for a comfort break or whether there's a, a change in strategy going on, we shall see. But David Alonso going into this race with three to go in the Hawkers European Talent Cup leads that rider there on the 84, Zonta van den Goorberg, by 33 points. And this is why. Yeah, the championship lead of yesterday was cut down quite drastically. Two races yesterday. These are highlights from race number two. In the opening race, David Alonso crashed out. The first mistake we've seen from the Colombian all year long. That handed an opportunity for Zonta van den Goldberg to go on and pick up victory and close the championship lead down even further, something he would do once again in race number two. The Dutchman was put under pressure a little bit more hastily this time around with Alonso there, not making any mistakes this time around, and he had the teammate Ortola for company as well. Ortola had to fight his way past Harrison Voigt, the Australian on the 658 Squadron Corsa machine in the early stages. And there was this almighty scrap for fifth place behind with a little bit of a coming together further back involving Filippo Farioli and uh, Salvador as well. We will bring you uh, Sandoval, sorry, there's been a penalty for Farioli as a result of that one. We'll bring you right up to speed with how the grid is shaping up in a moment. But focusing on this race too, it was a battle for four at the front. Ortola and Morelli eventually managed to get themselves into race contention, having dragged themselves up onto the rear wheel of David Alonso. But in the closing stages with three, four laps to go, Zonta van den Goorberg got his head down and cleared off, escaping the trio behind him, just as he did in race number one when put under pressure by Alvaro Carpi, who had come across the line to make sure that it was double Dutch delight on Saturday here in Aragon, picking up race win number three of the year. We came down to the final lap over second place with David Alonso, could well picked up a pivotal further four points after getting the better of teammate Ivan Ortola by less than a tenth of a second. Second place for Alonso means that he comes into today 33 points clear of Van den Gorberg. He needs to be a further 18 clear before we leave Aragon in about an hour's time in the European Talent Cup to be crowned our 2020 champion. So there was Van den Goberg yesterday picking up his second winner's trophy of the day. Can he make it a hat trick? He'll start from pole position. Yeah, and let's get the mathematics out of the way earlier on. My rough GCSE maths tells me that David Alonso, if he wins this race, which takes some doing, but he wins this race, he would have five wins for the year, which Santa van der Goberg could only equal in Valencia. He would have more second places over the course of the season, which means that if he's 50 clear with a victory, he can be the champion today. So if David Alonso wins this race and Zonta van den Goorberg is eighth or lower, that would be enough for David Alonso to leave here as the Hawkers European Talent Cup champion. If Alonso finishes second, then van der Goorberg would have to be 14th or lower for the title to be decided today. Van den Goorberg, who sits there with uh, more than a few spots of rain on his uh, visor, will be looking to achieve the reverse of that and take further points out of Alonso's lead and give him the best possible chance of fighting for the title in Valencia next month. Not that he says he's going to be able to. That's what he said to you yesterday after picking up that first, second victory of the year, sorry, and getting the better of David Alonso. He said, well, you're right back in the title hunt now, aren't you, Zonta? 
No. So he's not very pleased and he's not very much in the title fight, according to him. I would say otherwise. But this is definitely the heaviest that the rain has been all day. It's not officially chucking it down yet, but it's getting close. It is by the standards of uh, certainly today and yesterday. It was much heavier than this when we arrived on Friday when the rain was horizontal. Um, but you can just see by the, uh, the number of umbrellas that have suddenly gone up uh, on the grid and they are not to shield the riders from any sun that's uh, bearing down on them. Um, we can see race director, uh, the race director there having a word with the riders. I think just to ask them what he thinks, asking David Alonso what he thinks of conditions. But the conditions are only going to get wetter and wetter as this rain continues to fall. Let's just give you an update, by the way, on Jacob Rolston. We saw him crash on the warm-up lap. He has come back into pit lane. We saw him uh, come underneath us into pit lane. But we were going to tell you that he'd have to start from pit lane at worst. But the start, as you can see, has now been delayed as a result of these conditions. It's that sort of in-between conditions, I suppose, at the moment, where it's wet but not very wet. They're declaring it a wet race, but I think they're just going to take stock for a few minutes and just see how the conditions evolve as we get closer to the scheduled race time, which is in six and a half minutes. But as you can now see, it will be a little bit later than that. Yeah, unsurprising that one. The guys, I'm sure, will have all rolled onto the grid with slick tyres on, but that is not going to do the job with the rain now coming down a lot heavier than it has done all day. But, but, looking out of our commentary window to the left-hand side, there is blue sky over there. I don't think that this rain is going to last very long. It looks as though it's going to blow over in, what, five, ten minutes' time, so we may well see a little bit of a delay I don't think the race is going to get underway because these guys well they can't start on wet tires because the rain is going to stop in five minutes time it's, it's clear blue skies just what a couple of miles away down to the left hand side if we're looking down right in front of you on your picture there from turn one onwards it is blue there you go so it's not going to last this wet weather at all yeah if you started this race on wet tires from here the tires would be destroyed in a couple of laps yeah. there's just not enough uh, water to keep the tires cool at all um, so yeah I think they've made the sensible decision there the conditions aren't really suitable for wets but it's not exactly what you'd call dry at the moment the the, uh, the tarmac is slightly greasy I suppose and I think they will have been influenced, no doubt, by not only by the opinions of the riders, but also the fact that we've seen Jacob Rolston crash on the sighting lap. So conditions clearly are a little bit slippery when Rolston wasn't even, I assume, pushing anything close to full speed. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. Start delayed indefinitely due to weather conditions. That simply means that there is no defined start time yet, but we wouldn't um, anticipate it to be too long a delay if this rain holds off, which, looking at our comment box window, there are no more spots uh, hitting it. Uh, so perhaps this will be just a short delay and uh, we'll get underway shortly. It's been declared a wet race, new race distance, nine laps. So it is going to be a short, sharp dash for the cash in this uh, Hawkers European Tank Cup race on this Sunday afternoon. And again, in many ways, that is not what David Alonso wants. It's a short race, so less can go wrong. But when there are more variables, the last thing the series leader wants is things that could affect that. So um, with that 33-point lead, It'll be interesting to see just how cautious Alonso is and whether Zonson van der Goldberg sees this as another opportunity to slash into that championship lead. Well, he's got nothing to lose as van den Goldberg, as he said in your interview yesterday. All he can do, really, is go out there, win races and hope for the best. It's totally out of his hands. If David Alonso follows him home in second place, like he did yesterday for the final three races of the year, then Alonso will be champion. There's nothing that van den Goldberg could have done in these final races. If anything, he can just talk about what happened at the start of the year when he didn't pick up the points that would have put him in a championship position. So these conditions won't really affect him you wouldn't imagine yes it'll be a little bit sketchy out there for him but he hasn't really got a championship to contend with all he can do is go out there try his best and see what happens Alonso from the other hand just 14 years of age there's a lot of pressure on him here he's expected to win the championship given his dominance at the start of the year and now he may well struggle to hold on to that sort of form especially given the conditions that we're seeing at the moment he won't want to push from the offset at all one man that may well want to know is Harrison Voigt that man right there the 29 from Queensland in Australia picked up two podiums this season so far and has been in the top six both races yesterday the first of which he was stood on the podium he's having a very good weekend so far but a race win would top it up just nicely yeah he's had his best weekend so far and uh, the number of riders with the exception of the rider we're looking at now David Alonso and Zonta van den Goldberg this shortened distance just nine lap race does present these guys with an opportunity to really get in touch and uh, stay with this leading group because we've seen him break, break away in the two races yesterday while we saw Zonta van den Goldberg break away with Alvaro Carpe in race one 
a shorter distance gives you less of an opportunity to do that. Well, if there's one man that you want in your ear at 14 years of age, just before you start a pretty nerve-wracking race, it is a former world champion in Nico Tawal. He has been there, done that, I'm sure, offering some words of wisdom just to calm the nerves of David Alonso, head of this final race of the weekend for the European Talent Cup. And he won his uh, 125 World Championship in 2011 in Valencia in conditions not too dissimilar to this. So he's, he has very much been in this position of uh, very tricky weather conditions, variables. Of course, that year he was fighting against Joan Zarco for the 125 Championship. David Alonso uh, this weekend has Zonta van den Gorbo to worry about. And yeah, there's two ways he can be looking at this. There's one way where it can be like, well, I could leave here with a very strong championship lead. He could actually leave here today as the champion if things go his way. Um, but also there's that damage limitation exercise that he might have to do. Van den Goberg has the pace and he's been quick in both dry and wet conditions this weekend, Van den Goberg. So I think he's looking very, very strong, whatever the weather chooses to do. It'll be interesting whether Alonso decides to just take the points, take the 20 points if they're on offer and then head off to Valencia with what would be a very, very strong lead or whether he does go on the attack. What he will be hoping for today is for no repeat of the mechanical issues he had yesterday. He said he had a problem with his rear brake yesterday, which struck on the second lap. And that forced him essentially into a battle with his teammate Ivan Artola for second place. And a repeat of that, of course, will be the last thing he wants. But if he has a trouble-free race, maybe he does have the pace to go with Zonta van den Goberg as we look at the aforementioned uh, Ivan Artola, who starts on the second row of the grid. He starts fourth. And in the end, he and Alonso, we didn't know at the time as we were watching the race just what Alonso's problem was, but in many ways, they kind of uh, ruined each other's hopes of winning the race because they were so busy watching each other that Van den Goldberg was simply allowed to escape. Yeah, so much so they got right on the wick of Nico to all we saw him leaning over the pit wall, telling them to stop messing about with each other and get to the proper business of trying to chase down Zonta Van den Goldberg, which they eventually did try and do, but without success. Van den Goldberg was given half a second and that was all he needed. So good news, race starts in just over five minutes time here in Aragon. So not too much longer to wait with the shortened race distance from 14 laps down to nine so we'll be underway in five minutes time here in aragon julio garcia the man in the middle of the second row we'll be hoping for a much better performance today crashed out of third place in the first of our two races yesterday just two laps remaining heartbreak for him i'm sure but then it clearly must have affected his confidence because he only came across the line in 16th in race number two although that was easier said than done in that battle for fifth place. No, more than, what, 12, 13, 14 riders all battling it out, so you could very easily find yourself down in 16th in that almighty scrap. Yeah, this was a rider who found himself uh, affected as well by that huge battle for fifth yesterday. Angel Piqueras, who, uh, bit of a strange day in many respects, had a, a long lap penalty and a grip penalty for the first race of the day yesterday, which meant he started down in 13th. But that didn't stop him. He came all the way up to fifth in the end, despite the long lap. Then got to start from his original grip position of seventh in race two, but could only manage 10th, albeit just a few tenths of a second off a potential repeat of his race one result in fifth. The grid starts to clear then with news that the race is going to be underway in four and a half minutes time. But yeah, Piqueras is a rider to keep an eye on. He's impressed us in this rookie season uh, as uh, the young Spaniard on the number 18. Uh, as we now cut to Alvaro Carpe, who took us all by surprise, I think, in race one yesterday with that incredible charge through the field to take the lead uh, in that first race before finishing a fine second. Couldn't quite back that up in the second race again. He was one of those many riders where the result doesn't quite tell the full story of his race two. He was 13th, but again, if things had gone slightly differently for him, he could have been up in the top six. But uh, a strong weekend for him so far, uh, highlighted, of course, by that first podium. Yeah, if we're talking about impressive rookies, and Alvaro Carpe definitely falls into that category, as does this man as well, Alberto Fernandez, was right in championship contention. It's not gone his way today, or yesterday, should I say, so far. It made it three straight seventh place finishes. It's not really what he would have been hoping for, especially given his start to the year, but he'll line up on this one from the outside of row number three of the grid hoping to be back in contention for the podium places yeah it's amazing how the championship has uh, twisted and turned in that Zonta van der Goldberg's a major to main contender with those three wins in a row whereas Ferrandez who was the nearest challenger to Alonso has suffered those three sevens in a row and fallen way out of contention but this is the pole man Zonta van der Goldberg looking to make it four victories in a row and keep the championship alive to Valencia
Slick tyres across the board here in Aragon as we get ready to go for our final European Talent Cup race of the day here in Aragon. Race 9 of 11, just two left after this one with Van den Gorberg starting from pole, hoping to cut down the title lead of David Alonso who starts third. Row 2, Ortola Garcia and Carpe with row 3, Piqueras, Morelli and Fernandez. Juan Rodriguez starts from the front of row four in 10th ahead of Ruda and Tapia. Uh, Dejiro Sacco starts 13th ahead of Hugo Milan and Jacob Rulston, who won't be in 15th position, we don't think. We think he'll be leaving pit lane uh, at the end of the, uh, at the, as the riders go away, and then starting from the back of the grid. And then the sixth row of the grid is where we find two riders who've been penalized, Cruces and Farioli, with Sandoval completing row six. Yeah, both of them given three place grid penalties, and will have to take the long lap in the opening three laps as well. After Cruces took out Morelli in the fight for the podium in race one yesterday and Farioli took out Sandoval at turn one in that fight for fifth place in the latter stages of race number two. Any other men further down the field that we should be keeping our eye on? Possibly number 55 of Noah Detweiler, the Swiss rider, was second fastest in the wet on Friday. He'd start from 26. I'm sure he would have been praying that those grey clouds lasted and stayed overhead a little bit longer than what they did because they have blown over. Blue skies patchy blue sky should I say overhead now we are going to have a dry race nine laps ahead of the European Talent Cup guys but they will still be fairly tentative on the opening lap you would have to guess yeah, the great irony of uh, Farioli's penalty which has dropped into 17th on the grid after taking out Sandoval yesterday is it puts him right next to Sandoval on the grid they start 17th and 18th so hopefully the next time they arrive at turn one which will be in a few seconds time they're uh, slightly better behaved shall we say into that corner but it, as we mentioned before it's such a tricky turn one here especially if conditions are slightly greasy as they go into that corner. Van den Gorberg then from pole position, he'll be looking to get out front and just bolt straight away uh, in this nine lap race. Not a lot of time, as I mentioned, to make any kind of decisive break away from the group. It looks like it's just going to be gloves off, elbow to elbow from lap one to lap nine. No time whatsoever to find your feet in a nine lap dash in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. I mean, to be quite frank, there's no time in a full race distance in the European Talent Cup normally to be able to find your feet and find some rhythm, but even less so now with just nine laps ahead of them. A reminder, 33 points separates Alonso and Van den Goldberg, as Lewis said just a few moments ago. The championship picture is quite simple. If Alonso wins, Van den Goldberg must be eighth or lower to be crowned champion. If Alonso finishes second, Van den Goldberg must finish 14th, 15th or outside of the points. That's what it's like going into the race here. We could well see Van den Goldberg make it four wins in a row and take the championship right down to the season finale in Valencia at the end of October and start of November. Make sure you mark your diaries of that one, 31st of October, the 1st of November, the final two race days in the FIM CV wraps on. Yeah, and what kind of Hawkers European Talent Cup championship situation will we have going there? Yeah, as you saw on that graphic, we have the riders in third and fourth, Fernandez and Ortola. They are still mathematically in contention, 54 and 56 behind, but if they don't take some serious points over Alonso, they will fall out of contention here um, as we go uh, into the final weekend of the season. A crucial nine laps lie ahead. You can see the wind has picked up here in Aragon as well as a result of the rain that's blown through, thankfully, at the moment. You can see a couple of our uh, CV guys just on pit lane at the moment, just indicating to Jacob Rulston, yeah, he will start from the back of the grid. So the man that should have started from row five will be on the back of the grid as a result of that crash in the sighting lap. No such problems for his compatriot, though. Harrison Voigt will start from the middle of the front row with the two championship contenders sandwiching him either side. It's Alonso from third on the right of your picture and Van den Goldberg once again starting from pull. Can he get the whole shot once more? It's lights out in the final race here in the European Talent Cup and it's Van den Goldberg who once again gets the perfect start from pole position and once again will take the whole shot with Ortola swooping around the outside from the second row of the grid to settle into second. Yeah, what a break Van den Goldberg's made already. I'd like to see Alvaro Carpe start again. He looked suspiciously like he went early to me. There was certainly a movement from Carpe. Whether he actually jumped it or not, we will wait and see. But Van den Goldberg away at the, with the front and Alonso involved in a battle with the aforementioned Carpe for fourth position with uh, Voigt running third behind Ortola. Van den Goldberg is away at the front. 
great start from Alvaro Carpe there. The young man that was on the podium for the very first time yesterday has got another great jump from row number two of the grid. Bang into contention is the rookie once more. Meanwhile, we'll focus in on the number 80, the championship leader of David Alonso through the opening corners. I was just wondering if he was taking it a little bit slowly just to find his feet. But given the fact he's had a look up the inside of Harrison Voigt there as we go through turns nine and 10, we'll give you an indication that he's quite happy to push on. Yeah, he is. Marco Morelli is running in sixth position just behind Carpe. Um, that's up again of two places from where he started. Picaras has dropped one from seventh down to eighth. Ruda is running ninth at the moment with uh, Tapia uh, in tenth. He's up two places. Um, we're looking for, uh, well, the big loser, of course, is Rules Thunders had to start from the back of the field. Let's see what kind of progress he's made. He's already up to 26th, so he's already picked off 11 riders. But so far, Van den Goldberg is away with it at the front. He's already pulled out what is at least half a second over the two Aspar men in second and third. It's Ortola that currently leads his teammate Alonso, who has finally got in front of Harrison Voigt. Meanwhile, flags, yellow flags, that is waving. Morelli, I think. 14. It is, it is, the number 95 of Marco Morelli. Well, we thought he was going to be in contention today after finishing fourth in the race yesterday afternoon, but he's crashed out on the opening lap as the 13-year-old. Yeah, it's has disaster for him. He's, uh, he's been fast throughout the season, but it's just been getting the bike to the chequered flag this year, which has been his problem, which hasn't always been his fault. But we'll get, a, hopefully, another look at in, in a moment at what happened to him, whether this one was indeed his fault or not. But Van den Goldberg's lead at the end of the first lap is just under six tenths of a second over the two Aspar bikes, who've now got Harrison Voigt on their case uh, at the moment. Confirmation that Morelli is OK. Uh, from his crash at turn 14. We'll hopefully catch a look at that in a moment. But Voigt runs fourth. Uh, there is the bike uh, of uh, Morelli, who is uh, being helped away. He's walking a little gingerly there as he walks through the gravel chap. So uh, thankfully, he is up on his feet. Carpe is battling at the moment uh, with Barandes and Piqueras um, over fifth position. Um, but it's, uh, it's important now for these two Aspar riders to get their head down and focus on the rider ahead of them rather than each other. And the early signs on this first lap is that they are doing so. They've already halved Van den Goldberg's lead. Yeah, they're absolutely doing that. David Alonso battled his way through from fourth to second in half a lap, and now he's right on the tail of Van den Goldberg, dragging along with him the likes of Ortola, his teammate, Voigt Carpe, and Alberto Fernandez as well. It looks as though the Spaniard is finally starting to find the form that he showcased at the start start of the season. Yeah, he is, and uh, the, uh, the fastest first sector of the race so far for Alonso. He's uh, certainly not playing the cautious game at the moment, is he? He's just got his eyes very much on his, uh, his series rival in front of him. We've had confirmations that there were no jump starts, so whatever we did see uh, from Carpe, it certainly wasn't a jump, it was just a very quick reaction to the lights going out. But the top three at the moment, the top three as we saw yesterday, uh, of Van den Goldberg, Alonso and Ortola, uh, and Van den Goldberg, any hopes he had of making that early bolt, they've quickly been quashed as Alonso now comes out of turn 15. He's just two tenths of a second behind him. Um, and no signs of any sort of splits in the group at the moment. Everyone pretty much still uh, running together um, all the way down to the final points position, which at the moment is Colin Vire. Uh, Rulestone is now running in 24th, having started at the back of the grid. He's closing in on the points positions. Van den Goldberg now has himself a pair of Aspar bikes looming over his right-hand shoulder. Alonso did have a good look up the inside as they went into turn 16, but no way through. This could be a different story, though, as we complete lap number two here. Remember, just seven remaining. Now a shortened distance down to nine, so no time for messing about. Again, Alonso has a look, but no way through on Van den Goldberg. So it stays as it is, with the Dutchman leading the Colombian, leading the Spaniard here in the Hawkers European Town Cup. Fastest lap of the race to Alberto Ferrandez to 54, running in sixth position, a 2.03.7 uh, on that lap. He was some six tenths faster than the leader, who actually had a slightly slow lap that way, that lap, Van der Goek. He lost half a second to the two Aspar bikes behind him. Um, so we'll see what kind of pace he's got, whether he's just taking it very careful at the moment. It's not a very long race distance. But of course, you can only win it. Uh, sorry, you can only lose it on the first couple laps of the race. You cannot win it. So there's no point going too hard too soon. And Alonso has indeed now hit the front ahead of Van den Goldberg. So the first time this weekend, really, with the exception of Carpe's uh, brief uh, introduction at the uh, start of race one, he's, uh, yeah, uh, Alonso has now found himself at the front. That's the first time Van den Goldberg has had to do some chasing. Yeah, he certainly has Van den Goldberg now. The roles have changed. He's sat there in second place at the moment. The pair 
know each other pretty well. They finished first and second to one another on no fewer than three occasions so far this year. They both fight it out in the Red Bull rookies class as well. Meanwhile, he's got uh, not only Alonso to deal with, but Ortola now as well, as the number 48 squeezes his way past the Dutchman into second place. Confirmation here that both uh, Filippo Farioli and Adrian Cruces need to take a long lap penalty, as does the number 39 rider. That's of, Bartolome Perrin. It is, yeah, the 16-year-old from France. He is currently outside of the top 20 at the moment, but he needs to take a long lap penalty for a grid procedure in fraction. Remember, Farioli and Cruces both had theirs handed to them after incidents yesterday. At the front, though, there goes Van den Gorberg back in front of Ortola to set his sights on the championship leader, David Alonso. Yeah, this is where the two Aspar riders can really work together. If they can get involved with Van den Gorberg, although Van den Gorberg's going on the attack now. What a run out of the final corner he had to get alongside Alonso. Alonso is going to find himself swamped as they go down into turn one. Look at that. He's already dropped all the way back to the back of this group. I think that's four riders that have gone past him. He's just trying to go around the outside of uh, the uh, 83 of Carpe, and he does just hold it. But Alonso seemingly not getting a great run out of that final corner, and he was swallowed up. Well, the fastest lap of the race. I'm not sure if that's right. If it is, it's an unbelievable lap from Hugo Milan. He's got himself onto the back of this group. Now up to sixth place, the man with the yellow helmet there, the Cuna de Campiones rider, a 203.143. That is over half a second quicker than the lap record here. An incredible lap. I don't know how he's managed to pull that one through, but he is the new lap record holder. Half a second quicker than Ethan Guevara, our two-time race winner in the Junior World Championship, went this this time last year. Yeah, Milan very easy to spot. He's on the bright, got the bright yellow helmet in the uh, in the middle of that group. There you can see him just going through the three. Piqueras has now dropped to the back of this group. He ran very, very wide as they went through turns five and six. He was all the way out on the green, and that saw him drop right to the back of this group. But that is an astonishing lap from Hugo Milan. We've not really seen an awful lot of him this season. The, what he's been spending most of his time this year is by running through the long lap penalty loop. He had to do that <laughs> on three occasions across the three races at Jerez. Hopefully no repeat of that, because he's looking phenomenally fast. Well, he picked up his best result of his European Talent Cup career yesterday in race number one and eighth place finished the best we've seen from the 13-year-old by some margin, but goodness gracious me, what a lap that is. Are we sure he didn't over sort of <laughs> cut the chicane at 14 and 15 there to be able to do it? Half a second under the lap record. He is a man on the move. There he is, tucked in behind teammate Alberto Ferrandez, the 54 and the 44, both with the Cuna de Campione's concern. Leading group of eight then as we uh, come down to the final corner, as we cross the line in a moment there'll be just five laps to go it is a short sharp race this and uh we feel like these eight are going to be together right the way to the finish it's van den Gorberg. Uh, Harrison Voigt has come through in second place. There he is on the 29, the 658 bike. Then the two Aspar riders who've got the 54 Ferrandez for company. As they go into turn one, is Harrison Voigt going to have a look for the lead? He's showing a wheel, but he's not getting through. There's Carpe having a look up the inside, too, of his teammate Milan. Uh, sorry, his teammate Ferrandez. No way through at the moment. Piqueras, as I mentioned, at the back of the group after that mistake on the previous lap. But he's only nine tenths of a second behind the race leader. Down pit lane comes the number 24 of Guillaume Plants, the Frenchman, unfortunately having to retire from this one. That is his day done here in Aragon. At the front, though, still Van den Gorberg that leads the way with Harrison Voigt. It's in contention as well. This is one of the best rides we've seen from the Australians so far this year. And this is the sort of situation that David Alonso would not have wanted if it was just him and Van den Gorberg away with it at the front like we saw for the most part of yesterday. That would be perfect. He can control that. He is totally in control with what's happening. With a further seven European Talent Cup riders all under the age of 14 swarming around him, it is far from a controllable situation. Yeah, and almost impossible to form any kind of strategy in a race like this, especially with such a short race as we've got a rider down at the bottom of the cup through down at turn nine. It looks like it's one of the uh, Danival Intact GP guys. Could well be Sharul Shirili. Went down yesterday in a collision with Tyler Scott. We'll just wait to see someone falling down the yard. Uh, and no confirmation just yet. It looks like Adrian Cruz says has taken his long lap but penalty. Ton, I think, the 66. It is, yeah, Ton that's gone down. So we saw both Cruz says and Farioli's name drop down the list. They've taken their long lap penalties and they now find themselves 17th and 18th. Yeah, no they've had a nasty shock as they came to the long lap penalty because <laughs> there was a crashing uh, Dynavolt bike heading in their direction. 
Well, that's a little bit problematic. If you've only, if you're on your third lap to take the long lap penalty and suddenly there's a bike beached in the way, what do you do? Yeah. You just got to go back round again. I'm not sure if that's in the rule book. I'm sure it probably isn't. But anyway, back at the front, it hasn't happened. So what's the point talking about it? <laughs> the one thing that we do know that's happening is it's Zonta van den Gorberg that leads the way here in Aragon. He's looking for a hat trick of victories after double Dutch delight yesterday, and he's on course for it at the moment. Four laps to go, six abreast. What a race this is! Who's going to come out on top? It's van den Gorberg. Once more, with Voigt settling to second, and Adrian Fernandez has brought himself back into the title fight. He's there in third, is Alberto. Yeah, the two Aspar bikes were absolutely surrounded. I'm not sure Alonso knew where to look there. He somehow came through that first corner in fourth position. He's got Carpe for company, as does Otolo. Otolo trying to help his teammate out against Alvaro Carpe, who showed what he was all about yesterday with some fierce overtaking as he chased his way through into second place. Van den Gorberg, though, if he is thinking championship and he's assured us that he's not, he's got a nice little buffer at the moment between himself and his nearest championship challenger, David Alonso. And that, those buffers are in the form of Harrison Voigt there on the 29 and the 54 of Alberto Fernandez, who is not mathematically out of the championship contention himself. He needs a big result here and he needs to beat Alonso by a few positions to keep himself in the mix. But at the moment, uh, with just three and a half laps to go, Van den Gorberg retains the lead, and that is what it would mean as it stands at the moment. Of course, by the time they reach turn 12, that may have changed, because Alonso is already pulling alongside Ferrandez, trying to take third place. But as it stands, there's potential for Alonso's lead to be less than a race's worth of points. And remember, we've got two races coming your way in Valencia as well, on October 31st and November 1st as well. That is surely where the title fight is going to be settled, not only in the Junior World Championship and the European Moto2 Championship, but in this European Talent Cup as well. All three titles on the line as things stand. We've got three and a half laps remaining here in Aragon, though, to see if David Alonso to try and conjure up something to make sure that any sort of doubt that the championship will be settled there is uh, completely eroded by settling it here. Yeah, those long lap penalties have really punished Cruces uh, and Farioli. They're outside the points now. They're down in 17th and 18th positions, respectively. Uh, Farioli, in fact, is now 14 seconds behind the leader. Uh, so not only his hopes of points have gone, but hopes of any sort of top 10 have gone. As we look at uh, Alonso now trying to take advantage of the slipstream this time, rather than being punished for not having it. And he does take the lead once again, just under three laps to go now. And the series leader leads his nearest challenger, Van den Gorberg, with Ortola coming through now to take third place. Well, there we go, right on cue. David Alonso moves himself through into the lead of this race. Victory here would surely put himself one hand on that European Talent Cup trophy, especially with Van den Gorberg Been slipping bit, backwards. Yeah. He is getting beaten up. Ortola's moved through, and now Voigt has managed to find a way through as well. He'll have the inside line with the Dutchman as we go on to the break into turn number seven, and he's managed to steal it back away from the Australians. So it's Alonso leading from Ortola, leading from Van den Gorberg, who apologises for the aggressiveness of his move on Harrison Voigt there in fourth, who then gets bullied by Alberto Fernandez, who managed to find a way through. Not for long though because there's Voigt with the European Talent Club race has definitely exploded into life here. Yeah it's so it's all often the way if you lose your rhythm if you lose the line around this place or around any sort of circuit in a European Talent Club race it's so difficult to get yourself back in rhythm again because there's just a flood of riders that won't let you back onto the racing line. I was going to ask the question what will Ortola's approach be now? He's in between his teammate Alonso and the, his lead championship rival Zonta van den Goldberg. I'm, I'm pretty sure Altola will just be in the business for himself here. He might as well just go out and try and win the race because Alonso, if he finishes second behind him, he's still going to extend his championship lead. But the last thing that uh, Altola will want to do is get involved with his teammate and hold him up. His job, really, if, if, you're, uh, if you're Aspar or if you're Nico at all watching on, you'll be hoping that Altola can just delay Van den Goberg a bit. Yeah, whatever you do, Ivan, do not take out your teammate in front of you because that would be disastrous. Just provided Zonta van der Goer with a double slipstream down there as he's now going to go up the inside of Alonso and take the lead back again. Just two laps for remainers to come down the, to the final corner. Now they're going to appear in uh, our, our right-hand side as they come out the final corner of our commentary box window. Here they come. Van den Goerberg leads with two laps to go, but Alonso, once again, in the perfect position to attack into turn one. Well, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blast past our window just 
just seven tenths of a second of a second separating the leading eight riders here in Aragon. Two laps to go, and it's a championship leader back out from one small band and Goldberg in the space of half a second went from first to fourth with Voit able to slip through as well. Those have been the leading four protagonists in this one so far. Both Milan Fernandez and one man we've not mentioned, Angel Piqueras, have sort of been sat waiting in the wings. Well, this is the time to act, boys. One and a half laps remaining. If you want to win this race or finish on the podium, you need to pull your finger out now. Harrison Voigt going wide again. He's up the inside. of Zonta van der to try to sweep around the outside of him and take third place back again. But the Aspar bike still have control of the race. But van der Goldberg will be heartened, I think, as crazy as that might sound, by what happened to him at the start of this lap. He led across the line to start this lap, lap eight of nine, and was fourth by the time they arrived at turn one. He might be in the perfect position here, third on the road at the moment. And if Alonso leads out this final corner, he might actually find himself a sitting duck into the first corner. That could well be the case. Plenty of action to go here. One and a half laps remaining. Alonso leads the way. Here comes van den Gorberg. He's got a good run through turns 11. He's going to look to move through at turn 12. No way through, though. Ortola using that lanky frame of his to get the bike stopped. He's so strong on the brakes. He's a number 48. A lot of experience in this class. Probably as much experience as anybody else out there having finished right inside the top three in yesterday, not yesterday, last year's championship. And he's looking to do the same once again. In fact, it was the runner-up last year, of course looking to go one better this year, but he doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Alonso, the championship favourite and leader at the moment, certainly will be the case, even more so if he can win here in Aragon. But Van den Gorberg has got different thoughts. We're down the back straight for the penultimate time, and it's that slipstream that's worked to wonderful effect once more for the Dutchman. He's now sat in right behind his championship leader. That is exactly the position that he would want as we start the last lap here in Motorland Aragon. And margin for error is very, very small. Alonso leads over the line. And if he stays there, which he's not going to. Here comes Picaris up the inside. If Alonso can somehow win this race and Van den Goldberg falls to the back of this group, which would be eighth position, that would mean the title in a lap's time. But there's still a long way to go. So one mistake for Van den Goldberg could put his whole championship cam uh, campaign at risk. He's leading at the moment, but Alonso ringing second place will still have his designs on victory here. Plenty of overtaking places still to come. The biggest of all, of course, will be at the final corner. Where does Alonso choose to attack? So far, so good for Zonta van den Gorberg. He's been stalked by the championship leader, though, eh? I'm sure nervous Nico Terol watches on as he sees his rider sitting second and fourth place. Alberto Fernandez has popped himself into contention as well and don't discount either Harrison Voigt or Angel Piqueras. Both of them have got podium credentials so far this year and could well spring a surprise in this final half a lap. Time is running out though with Van den Gorberg still leading as we go through turn 10 into Mark Marquez corner. Van den Gorberg at the front and starting to eke out two or three bike lengths. Yeah, Alonso's teammate also Tolos and on back to now, he's in fourth position and a slight gap um, to the leading three. Alonso looks as if, if anything, he's going to be coming under a, under attack from Fernandez in third position. Here he comes on the inside. This is dream ticket for Zonta van der Gorberg. Alonso is going to take that one back, I think, because they go around the long turn 13. Indeed, he does. But I don't think he's going to be close enough to get in the slipstream of Van den Gorberg down this back straight. Van den Gorberg, if he nails the run out of 15, could be on course for an Aragon hat trick. The fight for the podium is going to go down to the wire as it is for the win. But at the moment, Van den Gorberg has got it in the bag. He's got three, four, five bike lengths. Can Alonso somehow try and claw him in and find a move at the end of the back straight? The Dutchman doesn't know how close Alonso is, so he's gone defensive unsurprisingly. Then moves across to the right-hand side of the track, onto the brakes for one last time into turn 16 and 17. Ortola in the back of the picture rolls around the outside of Fernandez to be able to take the final podium place. But one thing is for certain, it's a fantastic four victories in the European Talent Cup for Zonta van den Gorberg with David Alonso once again finishing in second place and the podium place going to Ivan Ortola. It's a carbon copy podium of what we saw yesterday with frustration for Alberto Fernandez. He slaps the petrol tank in absolute despair, missing out on a podium finish by just 35 one thousandth of a second. But he the nailed that here. last lap, didn't he, he van den Gorberg? Did, he Personal did. best lap of the race for him, the 2035 on that last lap, which if you take Milan's incredible lap early on in the race, out of the equation is about as fast as anything we saw. So he jumped out to perfection. He got his head down on that last lap and didn't give David Alonso a sniff of an overtake. Brilliant ride, brilliant ride from Zonta van den Gorberg. A hat trick of wins here in Aragon. Two on Saturday and one more for good measure here on Sunday. And a wheelie for good measure as well. A brilliant performance all weekend long. The Dutchman, 
has completely wiped the floor with everyone. Pole position on Friday, two victories yesterday, and the double one. What a weekend that is for the Dutchman. It will certainly make his flight home a lot easier later on this evening. But this man will sleep easy tonight as well. The championship hasn't been wrapped up. He came into the weekend 52 points clear. That's now substantially less. 28 points the difference between himself and Van den Gorberg, but it is still his to lose in Valencia. 28 points the difference. He could wrap it up in race one on October 31st at the circuit Ricardo Tormo if he can finish ahead of Santa Van den Gorberg. He'll certainly take that, or would have done, at the start of the year. David Alonso has one hand on the championship, but what on earth could go down in Valencia? I wouldn't even want to think about it. Further down the field, Angel Piqueras, well, he took the final top five place, and Hugo Milan put in his best ride of the year by some margin. Sixth place for the young Spaniard, a brilliant ride from him, and for good measure as well, a brand new lap record around the Motorland Aragon circuit. As we mentioned earlier, he was half a second under what Ethan Guevara managed this time last year. Brilliant, brilliant lap that dragged him into contact Contention and helped him towards sixth place. Harrison Voigt, unlucky in the end, he was well in podium contention, but came across the line in seventh with Alvaro Carpe in that leading group, unable to match the heroics of yesterday by eventually finishing eighth. That top eight, incidentally, this is just typical Hawker's European Talent Cup. The top eight riders separated by 1.046 seconds unbelievably close as it nearly always is but it's a carbon copy podium the same three guys in the same three positions as what we saw yesterday it's van den Gorberg in p1 with alonso p2 and ortola p3 I'm sure that won't be just as sweet for Zonta van den Goorberg. Yesterday, he was able to edge clear and make sure it was a comfortable race win in the end, both of them by over three seconds. This time around, he had to work for it. He had to battle back against a whole host of riders, including his closest championship challenger, David Alonso, but he got the job done once more. Three out of three for van den Goorberg here in Aragon. What a weekend for the 14-year-old Dutchman. Here he is crossing the line, three tenths clear after that magic final lap, a 203.5. Incidentally, going under the previous lap record, doing it on the last lap as well, just when it mattered to make sure it was a fantastic four straight victories for Van den Goorberg in the European Talent Cup. So tight in the battle for third as well with Ortola just, just sneaking third place ahead of Fernandez by 35 one thousandths of a second. From second to third, it was less than a tenth of a second splitting Alonso, Ortola and Fernandez. But a big hug from dad, Jürgen van den Goorberg, the former 500cc Grand Prix competitor. Well, he'll be liking what he's seen from young son Zonta at the moment. The future certainly looks extremely bright for his young son. I'm sure he'll be hoping to follow in the footsteps of dad in years to come. And who would deny him that at the moment? Four straight victories in this European Talent Cup class. The record held by Ethan Guevara last year, incidentally, when the young Spaniard won six in a row. He's got the opportunity to join him in that prestigious club with two more races to go in at the end of the year in Valencia. We'll have to wait and see whether he's able to do that, but I'm sure he'll be waiting to see if he can win the championship as well. 28 points to overturn now. Is he still in contention? Let's find out. The Dutchman is alongside Lewis in Park Ferme. Zonta van der Goerberg, a busy race, just nine laps, so a long wait on there, but you've, you've come to Aragon, three races and three victories. Yeah, it was, was a good weekend, of course. Pole position and three race wins. The last race was quite tough because the race was only nine laps because the start was delayed. And then I started to push already in the beginning because I was in front and I thought, yeah, maybe I can break away. But all the time they followed me, followed me. Then they overtook me a couple of times. And I found out I could uh, slipstream them at the back straight, but they would, they would overtake me again here. So I waited the last lap and overtook Alonso in the first corner and then just pushed the maximum and at the end it was enough to have a couple of bike lengths on the back straight and then I won, so. Congratulations. Thank you. The 
master plan paid off for Zonta van den Goberg. He said he sat and waited on the penultimate lap, waiting for the moment to pick off David Alonso, and that's exactly what he did. He started from pole position, and for the third time this weekend, he got a dynamite start to take the whole shot by some margin. Once again, he had a couple of pesky Aspar bikes following him, though, with both Ortola and David Alonso managing to battle their way through to second and third place, chasing down the Dutchman and dragging a whole host of other riders with them. Harrison Voigt was in contention, as was Alvaro Carpe and Alberto Perandez. Suddenly, in this nine lap dash, we had eight riders all battling it out at the front with a lap record going. Hugo Milan going half a second under what Ethan Guevara managed this time last year. Fernandez found a little bit of form after seven straight, not seven straight, three straight, seventh place finishes. At the back of the pack, there are a number of long lap penalties to be taken, with it causing all sorts of bother before Philip Ton eventually crashed out. At the front, though, there were five, six abreast on a whole host of occasions into turn number one with anyone hoping to pick out the correct lottery ticket to find themselves at the front. On a number of occasions, it was Ortola, then it was Alonso, and then it was Van den Gorberg, with the Dutchman drafting his way past Ortola into the final corner before starting the final lap. He said this was his plan, move through at turn one, put your head down and try to pull clear, and that's exactly what he did. An inch perfect move into turn one before stretching the advantage, a personal best lap on the final lap, enough to see Van den Gorberg hold three or four bike lengths down the back straight, and he was able to hold it out the final corner to make it a hat trick of wins here in Aragon, and more importantly, make it four straight in the European Talent Cup as he cuts David Alonso's title lead down to just 28 points ahead of the finale in Valencia. Another win for Van den Gorberg then in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. He matches David Alonso's tally of four wins this year and he's done them all on the bounce as well in Jerez and then three more here at Aragon. This time he was had to work as hard as he had all weekend long. Instead of finishing three seconds up the road, he was three tenths up the road ahead of David Alonso and Ivan Ortola. Ferrandez and Piqueras rounded out the top five. Further back, Julio Garcia had a strong ride. He's, uh, Better finish of the weekend by taking 10th ahead of Marco Tapia, Romeo Sandoval, Marcos Ruda, the Dutchman Colin Bayer, and Dejira Sacco taking the final point finishing place. Jacob Rulston, well, he had to come through from the back of the grid after crashing on the sighting lap. Unfortunate just to miss out on any points there in 18th. Tyler Scott, the American, crashed out yesterday, but saw the chequered flag. 41 seconds adrift of Van der Gorberg. Further down the field, the likes of Damon Jigilov, Mark Marius Henri, Angelo Tagliarini, and Bartolem Perrin. We are final finishers ahead of four guys that weren't able to see the chequered flag. And this time around, the Van den Gorbergs have shared out those team trophies. I think it was uncle yesterday. Today, yeah, we know Jürgen. It's three on the bounce here in Aragon. The former 500cc Grand Prix rider holds up three to indicate that it's a hat-trick of wins for his young son, Zonta. Another third place finish, second of the weekend for Ivan Ortola. It's a second, second place for David Alonso as he edges ever closer to that championship in Valencia, but he'll have one pesky Dutchman to contend with at the circuit, Ricardo Tormo. It's four on the bounce for Zonta van den Europa. Se le encargado de entregar este trofeo. Super B para el equipo Super B recoge Jürgen van der Gorber. Vámonos con el tercer clasificado. Es el número 48 del equipo Open Van Aspar Team, Iván Ortola. Iván Ortola, third place then. A good team job in the end. Third place in two of the three races this weekend. Right behind his teammate, David Alonso, who closes in on the European Talent Cup title, even if he's left Aragon without a victory. A couple of second places will do him just fine for now. But Zonta van den Goerberg, three wins here, four in a row, and he is the form rider heading to Valencia. Does he still have time to close in and pinch the European Talent Cup title at the final round in Valencia? He goes there trailing by 28 points.
international anthem we've become rather used to hearing in recent weeks in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Four on the bounce for Zonta van den Goorberg as the uh, underage celebrations of spraying water across each other. The uh, water fight begins. And Zonta van der Kolbe gives his father a good soaking after another super victory for the Super B rider uh, here at Motorland Aragon. Can he close the season out with a couple more and end the year with a Super 6 uh, victories in a row? If he does so, will that be enough to still claw him into the championship battle? As it stands at the moment, he has to beat David Alonso in the first of the two races. We'll see at Valencia next time out. If Alonso wins race one in Valencia, he will be the Hawkes European Talent Cup winner for 2020. And you've got to say, David Alonso has put in two championship rides this weekend, crashed out of race one, and it would have been very easy to panic, but he's gone on from there to pick up two second places, damage or limit the damage should I say meaning that it's just 28 points separating the Colombian and the Dutchman heading into the season finale in Valencia it's certainly advantage Alonso as we head to the final round of the year yeah well Tolo and Fernandez split by just a point now in third place Angel Piqueras in fifth spare a thought for him a good ride for him today finishing in fifth place and uh, he actually as we were in part for me waiting to hear from the winner he actually went out of his way to come to part for me and congratulate the top three finishers uh, of, uh, on the podium. So uh, a splendidly polite young man as well, Angel Piqueras, who's uh, certainly got a future uh, here in the European Talent Cup. He's impressed us throughout this rookie season and he's fifth in the championship as we head to the final round in Valencia. But just two riders now mathematically in title contention. It is David Alonso and Zonta van den Gorberg. 28 points separates them with 50 still to play for. We've got ourselves a head-to-head -head battle in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Those two men right there, Van den Gorberg versus Alonso, will make its way over to Valencia, where the 2020 title will finally be decided. This weekend, though, it's been Van den Gorberg's day. A hat-trick at Aragon puts himself right in contention with just one round remaining. championship guys to filter their way out of the paddock and onto the grid for their final race of the weekend conditions wise well again you know it's been changing every 10 15 minutes one second the blue skies have blown their way over and the next there's now some pretty ominous gray ones once again starting to circulate overhead it looks as though it's going to be that kind of day because as we look down down the valley here in Aragon to our left it looks as though it's a mixed bag of blue followed by grey, followed by a bit of blue again. So as you can see right there, there's patches of rain making its way through. And with wind as strong as that, the good news is it's only going to pass through. However, it's certainly going to play its part. It certainly is. Yeah, the conditions have been changing right throughout the day. And of course, that's what led to the delay in the uh, Hawkers European Town Cup race that we've just seen. And it played its part in the Moto2 race as well. If we look back at what happened earlier on today, drama at the start of the European Moto2 Championship race with rain falling at the start of the race and it saw championship leader Yari Montea go down on the warm-up lap uh, which of course was a huge blow to his title hopes so uh, yeah the rain has certainly played its part it's uh, coming short sharp burst today um, but when it has arrived it's certainly left a mark on proceedings is that a centipede <laughs> I think it may well be. Well, we saw a slug in, uh, in Catalonia, didn't we, on the on the TV pictures? And that could be a millipede, actually. Is that, that... 
I would imagine that uh, the millipede is a little bit uh, longer than a centipede, given by that. It was certainly a, a wonderful beast, and that, unfortunately, is the only attendees that we've got here in Motorland Aragon. We saw a couple of feathered friends yesterday, a few insects as well, but unfortunately, due to the current pandemic regulations, we're unable to have any fans here at Motorland Aragon. Fingers crossed that, obviously, we can battle our way through the current uh, global crisis and have you with us in attendance by the time the 2021 FAM TV Repsol series gets underway. But at the moment, you certainly are missed, but hopefully you're enjoying watching from the comfort of your own home. It's certainly a little bit warmer, I hope, than the wind and the rain that we're having to battle with here in Aragon. Yeah, the conditions have been uh, changeable throughout the weekend. I mean, we arrived here on Friday, as we mentioned earlier on, to horizontal rain. It was absolutely awful, and that's led to the uh, slightly mixed up grids that we've seen across the three classes. And the next race that will come up in our schedule, which is the uh, Moto3 Junior World Championship Race 2, of course, got a rider who's going to be starting 22nd on the grid and certainly out of position due to the qualifying, which was hit by the rain. Not that that's necessarily slowed him down this weekend, uh, Ethan Guevara. We'll talk about him shortly when we recap race one from earlier on today. But yeah, it's caused one or two mixed up qualifying sessions, a few mixed up grids, and it's certain to provide an entertaining Moto3 Junior World Championship race to this afternoon. We've mentioned it a couple of times already, but another good opportunity just to let you know when that season finale is going to take place. The 31st of October and the 1st of November at the Circuit Ricardo Tormo in Valencia. Pretty much after this weekend, you'll have three back-to-back -back MotoGP weekends, one of which at Le Mans and then two more here at Motorland Aragon. I'm sure you'll be uh, pretty used to the Aragon circuit by the time that comes to an end. Then in that weekend off before we get the final three races in the MotoGP World Championship, that's where we'll be in in Valencia with Steve English and Francisco Giles bringing you all of the action from Valencia. Yeah, three consecutive weekends of racing we'll have in Valencia, of course, because following the CEV season finale in Valencia, two MotoGP rounds at the circuit Ricardo Tormo with the European Grand Prix followed hot on the heels by the Valencia Grand Prix before the MotoGP season concludes uh, with an exciting round at a circuit that we've already raced at in the FIM CV Repsol this season, the Algarve circuit in Portimao. And then it's Christmas time. We'll all be <laughs> off home. We'll be having pints of Guinness, I'm sure, and opening presents, bit of turkey, thanks to Grandma Peggy and the lights. And that will certainly come round a lot sooner than what we think. What's that? Seven, six weeks away now. And goodness gracious me, that is going to absolutely fly by. Who would have thought that me and you were in Estoril in what was that, June? It was the middle of July, wasn't it? It was, uh, was it. It's all flown by, hasn't it, with this season, which uh, obviously motorsport series all around the world and the FIM CV Repsol is no different. They've had to adapt. They've had to react quickly to the change in global circumstances with the pandemic, which has affected lives all over the world. They've all had to think on the fly, really, and change their calendars. And we have to say the FOMC Repsol have done a great job to ensure we've had as many rounds as possible with double headers. Uh, last time at Jerez, here indeed at Aragon, and then two days of racing as well in Valencia to come. But we're not done here just yet. Here we go then. It's time for the FIM Junior Moto3 World Championship guys to take their place on the grid. One final race for those guys who can stop Ethan Guevara. <laughs> 